Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 8th lecture on economics, management and entrepreneurship. Today we are going to discuss on cost management systems and in particular we shall discuss activity based costing in contrast with the traditional costing systems. Various concepts of costs will also be discussed in detail. Cost management systems and activity costing system is the discussion for today and here first of all let us define what we mean by a cost management system. It is basically a collection of tools and techniques that identify how management decisions affect costs. So, it is basically a set of tools and techniques that helps identifying how management decisions influence costs. In particular, it measures the resources used in performing the organization's activities and then assesses the effects of uh, these decisions on the costs of these activities. Now, let us study what we mean by the cost management system and in particular with regard to its external and internal use. When we bring to the discussion the external uses of cost management system this is to provide aggregate measures of inventory value and cost of goods manufactured for external reporting to investors, creditors and other external stakeholders. As you know every enterprise there are some investors who invest money for creating and for sustaining the enterprise. They may be creditors also and there are various other stakeholders and for their information from time to time generally in a year once a year every company reports their financial health in terms of the inventory that they hold up, in terms of the cost of goods manufactured, also in terms of income that they make during that year. So, this cost management system helps in preparing certain aspects of these reports that are used by external people external to the company. More than that there are internal uses of cost management systems. It provides cost information, cost information for strategic management decisions and it provides cost information for operational control. Now, for these decisions whether they are operational or strategic accuracy of cost information is extremely important. Although for external reporting such accuracy is not so important, but definitely for internal decision makings on how much to produce, how much inventory to hold, how many workers to hire these are operational decisions and strategic management decisions are like 
whether to have a new plant, where a plant should be located in the first place, which market to target. So, these are strategic management decisions and for taking these decisions, the type of information, cost information that is needed has to be extremely accurate. Now, if you look at the internal uses of cost management systems, we give examples of three types of managers, the financial managers, the financial managers, they want to know the manufactured cost of inventory, so that that item can appear on the balance sheet of their annual financial report for external reporting this the financial managers need. Production manager wants to know the cost of performing a setup for a production run in order to compare a target cost established as part of a process improvement program and for various other buy or make decisions whether to how much to produce and so, so many other decisions the production manager needs to know the information on different types of cost. Top management wants to identify the profitability of several product lines to establish the optimum product mix. Suppose a company is producing 5 different types of products, cost information can help to know the profitability of each of these product lines. The one that is least profitable may be deleted from the product line or how much of what product to produce will also depend on the profitability information. So, you can see that cost information is useful at various levels of management starting from production financial to even top management. Now, Cost accounting system is the most fundamental tool that supports all cost management system. Cost accounting system is basically one of the tools and cost management system as we have defined earlier is a collection of various tools and techniques and cost accounting system is one such tool. It measures the, the costs for the purposes of management decision making and financial reporting as we have already discussed. Cost accounting system basically does two things, one it accumulates cost by some natural classification such as material cost, labor cost various activities that may have been performed in carrying out the task. So, this natural classification if we accumulate all costs over time then it is called cost accumulation. So, at the end of a particular period such as a year we can say the material cost in that year is this or the labor cost in that year is this. Cost allocation is the, the second aspect of cost accounting system is cost allocation. It is the process of tracing and reassigning costs to one or more cost objectives such as activities, processes, departments, customers or products. Now, you can uh, say, say for example, a particular machine is used for different products. For some portion of the time it is occupied by product 1, for some other portion of the time it is occupied by product 2. So, once we know the machine cost that is cost accumulation, we would now allocate this machine cost to these two different products product 1 and product 2 on the basis of let us say the machine hour utilized by each of these products. 
this is a cost allocation scheme. Now, here we have used a, a term cost objectives. In the next slide, we define what we mean by a cost objective also called a cost object. A cost objective or a cost object is defined as anything for which a decision maker desires a separate me measurement of costs. For example, one may like to have cost for a department in a year, cost of producing certain number of products, cost in a particular territory in the market, cost of bricks laid, cost of patients seen in hospital, tax bill sent, student hours taught, library books shelved, each one of them is a cost objective or a cost object. Now, we talk about direct costs and of course, indirect cost later. Now, when we allocate costs, we can see that certain direct certain costs are easily identifiable to that particular cost objective. For example, material that goes into manufacturing a particular part is directly attributable to the part. So, the material cost is a direct cost as far as manufacturing of the machine parts is concerned. Similarly, the labor cost can also be directly identifiable or assigned to or allocated to the machine parts manufacturing. So, it is very easy for us to say that these costs material, labor, power and so on and so forth are directly and exclusively identified or identifiable with this particular cost of objective in an economically feasible way it is possible. Similarly, in case of let us say a service system such as a healthcare system, patients, the doctor consultation cost is directly attributable to the patient or the tests that are conducted, the pathological tests can be directly attributable to the patients. Therefore, as far as this particular cost objective is concerned, cost objective patient is concerned, these two are direct costs. So, we define direct costs are those costs that can be identified economically and exclusively with a given cost objective in an economically feasible way. Now, let us talk about indirect costs. Indirect costs are those costs that cannot be identifiable, identified economically and, and exclusively with a given cost objective in an economically feasible way. We have given some examples to illustrate these, the same examples of cost objective, machine part and patient. Let us say a machine part is supervised by some people, some supervisors. Now, each supervisor may have been doing the task of supervision on not just this particular type of part, but various other parts. Therefore, supervisor cost is not directly attributable to the cost of manufacturing, to the task of manufacturing the machine parts, because the supervisor is also spending his time in supervising various other jobs. Similarly, the machine cost, a machine if not fully utilized for manufacturing these parts cannot be called to be a direct cost. A machine may be used at different time points for manufacturing different parts. Therefore, machine cost is also indirect and we cannot identify economically and exclusively 
the cost of a machine to the machine part in an economically feasible way. Take the example of a service system, a patient is the cost objective, let us say the power cost or AC cost that cannot be directly attributable to patient in an economically feasible way. Nurses they spend their time not on one patient, but may be on a number of patients. Therefore, nursing cost we cannot attribute this cost to only a particular patient. So, these are examples of indirect costs. Well, we can no doubt say that if a nurse looks after 10 different patients giving uh, 1 hour to one patient, 2 hours to another patient, 3 hours to another patient, then we can say the salary of the nurse has to be shared on the basis of the amount of time the nurse spends on the patient. So, there is a possibility of allocating the nursing cost to different cost objectives in some way, but it is it may not be a very economically sound way of assigning it and therefore, we call it an indirect cost. Now, that we have defined direct and indirect cost, we may still have certain costs that are too indirect to be able to be allocated in some on some basis. Sometimes, these costs remain unallocated. Now, we give examples of let us say machine part, let us say R and D costs. R and D costs are basically costs that are incurred for investment for future benefits, not necessarily for the present activity of manufacturing parts. Therefore, R and D cost is extremely difficult to assign or allot allocate it to machine parts. So, they may remain unallocated and from overall profit of the organization these costs may be subtracted. Similarly, accounting costs can also because accounting is done not for a particular part, it is done for various products services, products and services and various financial transactions such as buying equipment, selling goods. It is also utilized for salary purposes and for meeting various external needs for financial reporting. Therefore, it is extremely difficult to suggest that accounting costs can be either directly or indirectly allocated to a particular cost objective. Therefore, these costs may remain unallocated and later from the profitability of the company these costs can be subtracted to give our net profit. Similarly, this is the case for patients in a healthcare system. Let us say that a particular machine x-ray machine is utilized for, for x-ray of different patients, its maintenance, the operational expenses probably can be directly or indirectly uh, attributable to the patients but the maintenance cost of these x-ray machines is very difficult to uh, attribute to any particular patient and therefore, this remains unallocated. And similarly, legal costs for example, a patient is not happy with the service given to him or her and therefore, goes to court and there are legal cases that involves lot of expenses on the part of the hospital and that is a cost associated with it. And then these costs remain unallocated. So, I have given you examples of direct cost, indirect cost and costs that remain unallocated which are basically indirect, but they are not called indirect because they remain unallocated and later when we find out the profit and loss accounts, we prepare the profit and loss accounts, we subtract these unallocated costs. Now, we come to a particular situation of manufacturing. Now, in manufacturing there are basically three types of costs that are recognized. One is direct material costs, second the direct labor cost and third the indirect manufacturing costs. Indirect manufacturing cost 
is also known as factory overhead or manufacturing overhead or also known as burden. Direct material cost and direct labor cost as we have I have told you they are they are easily recognizable or identifiable with the cost objective. Direct material costs are the costs of acquisition of materials that are physically identified as a part of the manufactured goods and that may be traced to the manufactured good in an economically feasible way. So, it is easily traced to the particular manufactured product, traced or attributed that is material direct material cost. Examples are mild steel bars, aluminum seats, iron castings, sub assemblies etcetera, but there are indirect materials they cannot be directly traced to a particular product. Screws a particular product may be needing only 10 screws, but the company does not buy 10 screws it may buy one, one packet of screws containing 1000 screws. So, it is it is indirect the cost is indirect to the particular product. It is possible to find out the cost if 1000 uh, items bought cost so much 10 items cost so this much and therefore, that is the cost associated with the particular product, but these calculations can be very tedious and may not be economically feasible. Similar is the case of paints and glues these are indirect materials and the cost of tracing these costs to the product is more than the benefits of having a precise estimate of the product cost if we do these calculations. Therefore, they remain indirect and they are therefore, they go to manufacturing overhead rather than direct costs. Now, the direct labor costs are the wages of all labor that can be traced specifically and exclusively to the manufactured goods in an economically feasible way. Examples are machine operators and assemblers, but there is indirect labor such as the lift operators, storeroom clerks, plant guards, supervisors and so on and so forth tracing their costs to the product may far outweigh the benefits of a more precise product cost. So, they remain indirect. Now, indirect manufacturing costs are all the costs other than the direct material and direct labor that are associated with manufacturing process. They are as we have already told indirect material such as suppliers indirect labor, power, supervisory salaries, property taxes, rent, insurance and machine depreciation and so on and so forth. Now, we would like to give another classification of cost, we call it product costs and period costs. Now, product costs we say are associated or identified with products or purchased for resale. Now, these costs are inventoryable meaning that they can be stored before they can be used up. Now, these inventoryable costs become expenses in the form of cost of goods sold only when the company sells the inventory. To give you an example, suppose that the company buys 100 kilogram of mild steel bar. It keeps this 100 kilogram of mild steel bar in the stores, but uses in a particular 
quick only 100 kilogram for manufacturing a particular product. Now, this is sold out 100 kilogram. So, 100 kilogram is the cost of goods sold as far as the material part is concerned and the remaining 900 rupees that we had that the company has invested in buying the mild steel bar remains in the inventory. So, the cost is cost of inventory is 900 rupees and the cost of goods sold is 100 rupees. Of course, we have ignored the labor cost, the power charges and other things while calculating the cost of goods sold. Now, examples of product costs are direct material, direct labor, indirect manufacturing all these go with the product. Therefore, they are called product costs, but various costs as, I, as we have already mentioned, they are deducted as expenses during the current period without going through an inventory stage such as selling expenses and general administrative expenses or costs. These are examples of period costs, they are not associated with any particular product, but they are cost nevertheless and for the entire period, let us say of a, for a year, the selling expenses and administrative expenses are estimated and then they are subtracted to find out the profitability. This, these aspects are shown in this diagram for a merchandising company, a company that buys products and sells it without using these products for manufacturing any new goods. They just it is like a it is a trader who buys and sells. Now, here the product costs are these ones the, the trader buys the merchandise and this remains in the inventory. So, that is merchandise inventory and that is part of the product cost and then it sells a few of these items or these products and that is the cost of goods sold. Now, suppose that I had given you an example 1000 kilogram of bars it had bought. So, merchandise, uh, merchandise inventory was 1000 kilogram cost of goods sold suppose 100 kilogram worth of uh, 100 kilogram goods was sold. So, the cost of goods sold would be 100 multiplied by by the unit cost of the bar it probably sold it at a higher price so that is the sale. So, sales minus the cost of goods sold that is considered as an expense is equal to gross margin. So, only when a cost expires it becomes an expense. So, I might have spent 10,000 rupees in buying a product, but I might sell only 1000 rupees worth of product. So, that 1000 rupees is the cost of goods sold which is an expense. I might sell it at a price of 5000 rupees. So, sales is 5000 rupees, but the cost of goods that I sold is only 1000 therefore, the gross margin is 4000 rupees. These details we shall see when we talk about accounting for the time being let us understand that the word expense is used only when it is subtracted the cost is subtracted from the revenue to calculate the gross profit or the gross margin or net profit etcetera. Only then cost becomes an expense otherwise it remains as a cost. Now, gross margin or gross profit minus the period cost that is selling and administrative expenses 
becomes our operating profit or operating income. So, we see here that a product cost when expires becomes expense subtracted from sales it gives gross margin or gross profit. From the gross profit we subtract the period cost that is selling expenses or general administrative expenses such as accounting, legal, financial and other things for the whole year that is subtracted from the gross profit to give operating profit. This diagram shows these costs in a manufacturing organization. Here what happens? The manufacturing company buys the material which is a product cost and then manufactures it that means machines it and add certain value to it. So, while adding it incurs the direct labor cost, it also incurs various indirect manufacturing cost such as indirect material, indirect labor, power, supervision and various costs that are indirect to manufacturing. Now, these are all product cost and this while it is being processed or machine we call it work in process inventory. And later after the processing is over it becomes finished product inventory. Now, all these are costs and from out of the finished product inventory a few items are sold. The cost of those items that are sold is the cost of goods sold and then only it becomes an expense else not else they are all costs and it might sell at a higher value therefore, the sales proceeds or the sales revenue is higher and the difference of the sales and the cost of goods sold is the gross profit or the gross margin wherein the period cost selling and administrative expenses are subtracted from the gross profit it gives the operating income. So, you can see that in a manufacturing organization the product costs are in addition to the direct, direct material it also has direct labor and indirect manufacturing that gets reflected in the form of work in process inventory. Now, we come to two types of costing systems the traditional costing system and activity based costing system and we give some example. One example of each type of costing system and compare them these two costing systems. First the traditional costing system we already in fact discussed the traditional costing system this is a diagrammatic representation of the costing system that we have already discussed direct material and direct labor they can be directly traced to a product therefore it's called it's a part of the product cost there are indirect resources which with some effort if we can identify the cost driver then we can allocate part of the indirect cost to the product. So, the product cost can also be estimated for example, suppose a machine has a depreciation and the depreciation has to be allocated to a particular product. We can say that two products let us say to give an example suppose a machine is used for two different products if the machine depreciation is 10000 rupees and if product 1 uses uh, 3 uh, the, the machine hours proportion of product 1 and product 2 if they are 
3 is to 2, then we can say that 10,000 multiplication 3 divided by 3 plus 2, this the, the depreciation allocated to product 1 and the depreciation allocated to product 2 is 10,000 multiplication 2 divided by 3 plus 2. So, we find out the cost driver, the cost driver in this example is the machine hour. So, the proportion of the machine hour used up by each product can be this information can be used to decide how much is the indirect cost of the machine that is allocated to that particular product. And other unallocated value chain costs remain unallocated and they are subtracted later from the gross profit to give the operating profit. This is the traditional costing system. We give an example of a traditional costing system. Let us say that the billing department at an electric utility company provides inquiry and bill printing services to 120,000 residential customers and 20,000 commercial customers. The billing department's costs are all indirect. It allocates all indirect costs based on the number of account inquiries of the two customer classes. So, there are two customer classes residential customers and commercial customers and this company basically provides inquiry and bill printing services. The number of customers of each class given here as 120,000 and 20,000. The billing department's total cost last month was rupees 565,340 and it received 23,000 inquiries that month of which 18,000 were residential account inquiries. That is 78.26 percent of the total inquiries were from the residential customers, the remaining were from the commercial customers. Find the costs allocated to residential and commercial accounts. <coughs> Now, this is how the traditional costing system operates. These costs are all indirect and to be able to uh, allocate these costs to different enquiries or to different classes of customers, we have to find out the cost driver. And in this case, the cost driver is taken as number of inquiries. The total indirect cost that month was 565,000. 340 rupees. Total inquiries were 23,000 of which residential were 18,000 and commercial inquiries were inquiries from commercial customers were 5,000, 78.26 percent and 21.74 percent respectively. So, if this is the total indirect cost and these are the number of inquiries, cost per inquiry becomes 565,340 divided by 23,000. So, this is the cost per inquiry. So, if the company wishes to charge the customer on the basis of inquiry, it can use this 24.58 into 18,000 is for the residential inquiry cost and for the commercial this is the cost. On the other hand, you see here that indirect costs allocated to residential inquiries then becomes 565,340 multiplication 0.7826. Now, that makes it 442,440 rupees and for commercial inquiries the same thing becomes 565,340 into 0.2174 that is 122,900 rupees. So, this is the indirect cost allocated to different classes of customers and we know that there are 
120,000 residential customers and 20,000 commercial customers. Therefore, the cost per residential account is 442, 440 divided by 120,000 that comes to 3 rupees 69, 3.69 rupees per for every residential account and cost for commercial account is 122, oh, there is a mistake here, we can make a correction here, this has to be 1229, 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 2, 9, 0, 0. Yes, the cost per commercial account is the indirect cost allocated to the commercial enquiries which is 122.900 divided by there are 20,000 commercial customers. So, divide by 20,000 that gives us 6.15 rupees per commercial account. Now, this is a simple method of traditional costing system which is used to find out how the indirect costs are allocated and you can see that the allocation is based on finding out first of all a cost driver. In this case the cost driver is number of enquiries. Now, let us introduce the activity based costing system. It can be many stages, it can be two stages or more than two stages. We are giving here an example of a two stage activity based costing system also known as ABC system. Now, here first of all like the traditional costing system all the resources first of all you can see that here we try to find out which resources are used up directly and they are identified as product cost. As far as the indirect resources are concerned we try to find out what activities are done and for each activity a cost driver is found out and based on that the allocation of the indirect resource to the product cost is found out. The difference between the traditional costing system and activity based costing system is that instead of directly allocating the indirect resource with the help of cost driver to the product cost, here a few intermediate levels of activities are first of all identified and the percentage of the indirect resource spent on each of these activities are found out and then the cost of activities are estimated and with the help of cost drivers then these costs are allocated to product cost. As before various unallocated value chain costs remain unallocated and are subtracted later. So, basically here the inclusion of the concept of activities makes it very interesting, very robust and very popular. Now, the procedure for conducting an ABC requires four steps. One, determine the scope, the cost objectives, activities and the cost drivers. So, not only cost objectives and drivers, but also key activities. Then developed a process based map representing the flow of activities, resources and their interrelationships. Collect the relevant data concerning costs and the physical flow of cost driver units among the resources and the activities. And finally, calculate and interpret the new activity based information. So, basically here we try to find out the activities, cost drivers and resources and make a map representing the flow, showing the flow of activities and the resources and the relationships and the relevant data concerning the 
cost driver units are to be collected before finally, interpreting the information. Now, let us take an example to illustrate what we are saying here. Let us consider an example of an auto ancillary company producing plastic dashboard casing for the control panel of trucks. Now, this requires several activities, but we will consider only two types of activity the machine setup activity and the molding machine processing. The actual setting of, of the machine and the actual operation of the machine only these two aspects. Now, the resources required to carry out these activities include resin which is directly traced and indirect resources such as injection molding machine, operating labor and electrical energy meaning that these are used for other products also whereas, resin is used only for this product and therefore, it is directly traced. The molding machine, the workers and the energy they are used for different other products. Now, we to in order to draw the process based map we need to define certain symbols. We use four five different types of symbols. First we show resources that are fixed in nature fixed cost resource we gave a give a symbol like this. The variable cost resource is shown in the form of a symbol like this. The activities are shown in the form of a rectangle and the cost objective is shown in this form. The physical flow of the cost driver units among the activities and the resources is shown in by the in the form of a of an arrow with a value r written here r we will indicate we will mean activity or resource consumption rate. Now, for the previous example let us use these symbols and show how they can be depicted in the form of a map. Now, the these are our fixed resources the molding uh, molding machine depreciation and the operator labor wage these are fixed resources fixed cost resources and energy and resin are variable cost resources. The activities are two types of activities one is the setup activity the other is the machine processing activity and this is our cost objective truck dashboard casing. In a particular month 800 casings have been prepared have been manufactured. The molding machine is used not for this product, but also for other components as well. Operator labor is used not for this particular product, but also for other components as well. Energy is used not for machine processing activity, but also for other activities as well. Whereas, resin material is a direct cost as far as truck dash, uh, dashboard casing is concerned. So, this is the physical flow these are cost drivers written down here machine hours, labor hours, kilowatt hour, kilogram, machine hour, number of setups. These values rupees 40,000, rupees 125,000 are the total cost in a particular period 
let us say a month in which 800 casings have been made. And this 40,000 is used not for manufacturing only 800 casings, but other products as well, other components as well. Similarly, 125,000 rupees has been spent in that month not for producing only 800 casings, but also other components as well. Now, what are these R1, R2, R3? Basically, it says that for one casing 0 0.01 setup of the molding machine is required. It means 100 casings would require one setup. It means in one setup of the molding machine 100 casings can be manufactured. So, this is written as R 1 equal to 0 0.01 which means 800 casings would require how many setups? It will be 800 multiplied by 0 0.01 which is equal to 8. So, 8 setups are required for molding machine. Similarly, here R 2 equal to 0 0.25 it means one casing would require 0.25 machine hour something like 15 minutes of a particular labor working uh, of a machine working. So, R t equal to 0 0.25 hour that is the meaning. So, 800 casings would require 800 multiplied by 0 0.25. Similarly, how many kilogram? One casing would require 0 0.6 kilogram and 800 casings would require 800 multiplied by 0 0.6 which is 480 kilogram of resin material. So, similarly we can say one setup will require 8 machine hours. So, if there are 800 into 0.1 that comes to 8 setups it would require 8 into 8 64 machine hours as far as this particular casing is concerned. Similar interpretations can be made for this and for this. Now, we saw here that one casing requires 0 0.01 setup, that is 100 casings require only one setup, 0.25 machine hour, that is 15 minutes, 0 0.6 kilogram of resin material. Hence, 800 casings require 800 into 0 0.01. 8 setups, 800 into 0 0.25 that is 200 machine hours and 800 into 0 0.6 which is 480 kilogram of resin material. Now, here in this table we saw setup activity 8 setups and 200 machine hours. <coughs> so, molding machine depreciation is 8 setups and each setup require 8 machine hours making it 64 machine hours. And machine processing activity, machine processing activity requires as you can see here. So, 1 into 200. So, 200 machine hours this is this is 800 into 0 0.25 is 200 machine processing activity 200 machine hours and that is that will require into 1. So, 200 into 1 is 200 therefore, the total molding machine depreciation total is 265 as far as these two activities are concerned. Similarly, one calculates for operator labor energy 0 0.3 into 200 resin material already we have calculated as 480. So, direct cost of energy is 60 kilowatt hour into 3 rupees per kilowatt hour which is given in the process map 
that is 180 rupees. Direct cost of resin material is 16 kilowatt hour into 7 that is 422, 420 rupees. Indirect machine depreciation cost is the percentage percent machine hour used by casing into 40,000 and indirect operator labor cost is percent labor hour into 125,000 percent machine hour used by casing is 264 by by the total machine hours used by all components percentage labor hour used by casing is 648 divided by total machine hour. Therefore, the total cost of casing is 180 plus 420 plus all these indirect costs. So, we take this as the ratio because because we know that these activities are used for other components. So, the fraction of the time it uses it uses its time for this casing will be used to calculate this. Now, uh, we gave here a glimpse of activity based costing. I think in our next class we shall elaborate a little because I went through this little hurriedly because of paucity of time. Thank you very much.